Amen. Man, amen, amen. All right, y'all. I think I got it right now. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all can hear me on, on the uh, conference call. I have the video going live on Facebook, right? So, so that's where we are right now. So what we're going to do, we're going to mute everybody's line on the call. Um, we'll start the recording, and uh, then we'll start the program uh, as far as the preach word tonight. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and, and so let me see everybody's line. Welcome, everyone, to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Friday Night Lights edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church, along with my co-host, Pastor Paul McCoy. And I never, ever can get your name, the, your church right, Pastor Paul, so go on and say it for us. <laughs> Uh, that's all right. Church of God in Christ of Faith Tabernacle. Of Faith Tabernacle. Church of God yes, in Christ of Faith Tabernacle. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go, let's go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly yes. Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings, Lord. We, we lift you up and we glorify and magnify your name. We thank you this night, dear Lord, for allowing us to come together over this technology, the God in Light Ministry and 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 over facebook on the conference call we lord we just thank you this day and ask you to just continue to bless this ministry bless the the head of the god in light ministry lord bless the bannerman family from top to bottom whatever they stand in the need of lord we just thank you for this right now and then lord we thank you for everybody that is listening in tonight on on the uh, uh audio on on uh conference calls portion, and then those that will be listening to this recording at a later time. We give mm -hmm. you glory, God, and we plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of their lives and our lives also. We plead the blood of Jesus, Lord, over our communities, over our cities, our towns, our states, our country. We plead the blood of Jesus over this entire world. We plead the blood of Jesus over every household that this message will touch, dear Lord, that your blood has the power to heal, deliver, set free, forgive. Your blood, dear Heavenly Father, has so much power, Lord. There's power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. We thank you, Lord, for, for this, 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 this moment and where you are right here in the midst of us because we know according to your word that you said where two or three are gathered in your name, you would be in the midst of us, Lord. So we thank you, Lord, for your presence because in your presence, there is power. In your presence, there are all the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, all of the fruit, Lord, and right there in your presence. And we thank you for this and we give you praise and we say glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Um, hallelujah. Amen. Um, amen. Man. So tonight, tonight, um, uh, we are trying this new technology where Paul and I both were on broadcasting on Facebook Live at the same time. Um, if, if uh, you know, uh, those who are, are tuned in on Facebook, we welcome you. Um, as I said, I'm Pastor uh, Mark, and then Pastor Paul, wave your hand, <laughs> amen, amen. And uh, we're going to kind of do a dual teaching or preaching tonight. Uh, we, 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 we only have our subject underhand uh, right. <laughs> and, and, and a few scriptures, but, but, but we're going to let the Lord use us. And so one of the scriptures that we were dealing with uh, well, the overall theme for, for, for the month of October is overcomers. Uh, we are overcomers. And um, the scripture that, that we kicking this off with is 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. 1 John oh. chapter 4, verse 4. And 
and and, and I'm, I'm going to read all the scriptures that we got on our on the thing here, but I want to start off with that one. And and it says, "You, dear children, are from God, and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than he or the one who is in the world." So so that that's a wonderful passage of scripture talking about being an overcomer. We're going to come back to, to all of the scriptures, I, but that's where I know I'm going to have my jumping off point. Then uh, uh, Jesus, uh, the, well, the word of God tells us over in Revelation um, and um, in, in the Revelation passage that we, that we raised up, see if I can get it on my screen right so I can see it. Um, matter of fact, let me see. There we go. All right. Revelations chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12, and it's verse 11. And it says, we uh, will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And I think I'm reading the proper scripture here. Let, let me go to the Bible to make sure I got it right, because I, I don't want to <laughs> have, have folks uh Going like he read the read the scripture, and then you know didn't even read the right scripture. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! So let me make sure I got my scripture right. Oh, uh, see, come on, Revelation, come on now. All right, yes, and they and it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Did they did love their lives to death? And that's a, that's a verse talking about people being overcomers. And then uh, from that scripture, from that scripture, uh, um, I, 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 we went uh, because some things were going on in my particular life um, and in the lives of, of other people, my other family members and things like that. I pulled up this Romans, the 12th, Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 21. And it says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's some of the stuff we're going to talk about um, for the month of, of, of October. Um, uh, Pastor Paul and I, will, like I say, we'll be doing some tag team preaching and teaching on, mm -hmm. on the very subject of being overcomers. Uh, I think... Uh, People are going to really appreciate this. And I think um, we have one guest so far scheduled. I think he's scheduled on the 20th and we'll see where he goes from there. But, but, but this is what I want to deal with. And, and in particular, I'm, I'm dealing with it from this standpoint. Uh, we know that on um, this past weekend, um, over 50 people, I think the number's up to 58, were shot and killed, and over 500 people were wounded in Las Vegas. And, and they can't find any reason other than pure evil and insanity that would lead um, the, the, the shooter to kill and shoot all of these people. Um, and so because he did this, uh, we're left in, in, in terror. Uh, um, no people refusing to call it domestic terror, but, but, but I mean, basically that's what it is. No rhyme or reason, no doctoring. One of the things that, that, that was said about the, the man who, who committed this, he was a wealthy man. He, he, you know, he owned land and owned, uh, houses and stuff at real estate that he owned. And then in addition to all of that, um, he loved to gamble and he loved to drink. And he was a nice guy, everyone said. Mm -hmm. And he gave to people, but, but he had no relationship that anyone knew of with God. No affiliation with any, any, any form of, of, of religion, if you will. So, so that really throws people off. Um, and they don't know if he was a Democrat or Republican or whatever. None of that falls into place. And, and the thing that, that really, really, really 
like make me scratch my head was and, and really say this has to be evil that's going on. It wasn't a racial thing because it was a country music festival where the majority of the people was of his same race. So we don't know why he did it in the natural, in the natural. Right. But we do understand in the spirit that it was evil. And so, so where I want to go, where I want to go, um, I'm going to start off with First John and and. Uh, Pastor Paul, this is what I want you to do. I'm, I'm going to let you, because I need to drink me some water. Start in 1 John chapter 3, start at verse 24, then read to chapter in chapter 4 all the way over to verse 7, I mean verse 6. Amen. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 24, it starts by saying, and excuse me as I look down, I'll try to look up, maybe we'll see how this all works out. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit he hath given us. Chapter 4, First John chapter 4, verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming to the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Paul. And, Amen. And, and what we have here is um, uh, a comparison of the spirit of truth mm -hmm. and the spirit of error. Yeah. And so the spirit of truth is the main ingredient for us to become overcomers. We must have the spirit in us. And then there are the e, the, the spirit of error, uh, the spirit of the Antichrist. And, and, and he gives, John gives this, 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 this uh, a statement that there are many false prophets out there. And, and you have to test the spirit with the spirit. This testing of the spirit is a is a metallurgical term talking about how they would test metal to see if it's pure gold, if it's a you know 10 karat gold or, 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 or 18 karat gold, whatever. But they 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 test it. And and, and when you test the spirit of, of of something, when you when you test something, you're testing the seed of its purity. And there are many false prophets out there that 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 are line themselves up with the Antichrist. And you say, wait a minute, wait a minute, Pastor Mark, you know, you 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 calling people out. Yes, I have I have a reason to call them out because the word of God calls them out. Turn turn with me for a minute now over to the second chapter of John. And I'm gonna start a uh, first John, first John chapter two, starting at verse 18. And then I'm going to read this. Uh, listen to this in verse 18. Little children, 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. Even now, we know that this is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. 
for if they had been of us, they would not have they would have continued with us. But they that went out, that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. You know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And that no one, that no lie is it is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Who ever denies the Son does not have the Father either. And he who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. And so what 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 John is being led to write here is to tell us, even when he wrote this over 2,000 years ago, we're in the last days, we're in the last hour, and the Antichrist is already at work. He started way back then. He may not be a person per se right now, an individual that we can point our finger at, but, but Ephesians chapter six tells us that we fight not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rulers in dark places and high places. And, 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 and so that is the spirit of error, the spirit of the Antichrist that is at work right now. And, and there are things that are happening because of this spirit of the Antichrist that is, is rising up even more so because just like John wrote, this is the last hour, this is the last time, we are 2,000 years closer now than we were when John wrote this. And so... We as children of God have to learn and understand that we are overcomers, that, that, that he that is in us is greater than he that is in this world. We have to understand that we are children of the most high God. Oh, glory, hallelujah. And we have some protection that, that others who don't know him as their personal Savior and Lord do not have. But we have that protection because can't nobody snatch us out of the Lord's hands. Oh, hallelujah. I, that, that's, that's, that, that, it, it, that's where I wanted to go tonight to help people to understand that we are overcomers, my brothers and sisters. We have the spirit of the most high God. Why do we have the spirit of the most high God? Because we've confessed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We believe he, he, he came down from heaven and he was incarnated into flesh and he became flesh for us. He became sin for us and he died on the cross and God raised him from the dead. Yes, he's fully human and he's fully God. He's both at the same time and he died for our sins. And then God raised them from the dead. That's the, the basics. That's getting back to the basics of our doctrine. Basics of our understanding of God's word. I'm going to slow down right now and let you jump on in, Paul, because I know you got something to jump in with on that. You over that mesmerized, amen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 as, you were, as you were speaking, I... I... First John four and one is one of my favorite scriptures because of the fact that it that it gives us an option to try to try the spirit. I, I say this, I say it a lot because it's important. Now let's un, let's get an understanding of this. The word try does not mean challenge. All right, challenge is a basis of opposition. Those that try to challenge try to oppose that which they're which they're up against. We're not opposing. This. We're not opposing God. We're saying, Lord. This is you, then I'm going to try your love. I'm going to try those things, the fruits of the spirit, the joy, the peace, and all these things. 
Now, let's look at the concept as, as Pastor Mark. I'm going to be the one that starts to break down the words, if you don't mind. Let's look at let's look at the word overcomer because this is our basis. This is the fundamentals of this of this this month. The word overcomers. Now let's get let's get this right. As we said, we're going to start the fundamentals. The word of the overcomers is that it is for us as Christians, those that believe, those that have confessed and believed, hold fast to their faith, even unto death, against the powers of their foes. Now the only way this is done is it, and it backs back and it says of Christ. So without Christ, we are not overcomers. So a lot of people get this whole self-indulged situation together, and they believe that we can do this on our own, but not, there, you can't do anything without Christ. Let's get that straight and foremost right now before everybody starts flexing their muscles. I'm an overcomer. No, you're not. Without Christ, without Christ, you're not. You're just someone that's up in smoke because to be an overcomer, you have to you have to be in Christ. He that is in Christ, as it says, is a new creature. Now I know we're kind of you're kind of moving on in this situation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all these things that are new. That is how you become an overcomer. That is how the word becomes active. That is how you try the spirit and see it as of a God, not challenge, but try the spirit. And this is a, and it's a wonderful, if you don't mind, it's a wonderful concept. It's a wonderful concept to be overcome. As as Pastor Mark was talking about the situation that happened, that happened with this, with this murdering, with this killing, and people are asking why, what is going on, what is happening, and they're trying to analyze and overanalyze this man and his wife and all of this, but then they forget about the true enemy. Yeah, yeah. You forget about the true enemy because see the fact is is that you a lot of people don't believe in the true enemy just because they can't see it, taste it, touch it, smell it, then it must not exist. No, the enemy is all in this situation. And those that are of the world cannot see the spiritual cannot see the speak the spiritual aspect of this. As it says in 1 John 4 and 5, they are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world hears them. So when you're listening to the news and you're listening to all of this, all you're hearing is how the world is analyzing and, and, and conducting this. But those that are of God, those that are of God, we see this situation for what it is. The Antichrist is here. What is the Antichrist? The word anti means oppose against see a lot of people thinking that the movie the omen you know the omen too they, they think of the boy walking around here and they got the whoo, 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 and they think he's throwing stuff at you and busting people in the head with with bricks and all this no the antichrist is anyone that is against christ simply put anyone that is against christ and we are and this world has become flooded with the antichrist yeah. The anti-Christians. And it says, and, and if we want to rewind, when it says, beloved, not beloved, and this is 1 John 4 and 1, beloved, believeth not every spirit. Believe it, don't believe everything you hear. Don't believe everything you see. But try the series, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going on into this world. Now, I don't mean a false prophet. Let's, let's get this understanding as, as Pastor Mark started. I'm going I'm to keep it rolling. The false prophet is not just this person that stands up in the church and starts a hoof and holler, oh, law on. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't think that it's just that one. It could be a false prophet is anyone that is against Christ, that is speaking against God. Anyone. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. A lot of people don't want to do that anymore. The process of overcoming is to confess and believe. Romans 10 and 9 plays the part. It is a compound sentence, meaning that both must happen. This is why I try to I try to shove down everybody's throat. If you confess without belief, you got a problem. Got a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you try to believe without confession, you got a problem. You have, have done the thing. So therefore, when it's saying that every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is of God, you must believe and confess. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Point blank, plain and simple. We're not talking about higher powers, these whole, as they try to round about it, higher powers, something else, the basis of the universe. I love when people do that. This is high power out there, you know. No, this is God and God alone. Let's give God just due. Let's not try to play around with this, people. If you do not confess Christ, you are not of God. 
and that is the spirit of the Antichrist. So no matter how much you sit back here and believe, oh, I got this, that, and the other, I'm spiritual, and I'm spiritual. A lot, a lot of people sit back here and think being spiritual means you say these little eloquent words and be grammatically correct and say stuff that, that blows people's minds or whatever the case is. But no, 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 that's, that's, just being, that's just being knowledgeable. But to be in the spirit, the true essence of the spirit, you have to be in Christ Jesus first and foremost. Yes? Yes. If not, what does it say? You are opposing Christ. Yes. So these are, see, there's a concept as, as I'm looking at it, the concept of being an overcomer, to be able to, to be able to get through these situations, to be able to, to deal with these situations, to have the faith in God that God can and that Christ can in your life and be able to move these mountains through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. The word through means because of Christ, not because of me, not because of my knowledge, not because of the fact I may have memorized scripture. No, because of Christ and Christ alone. How am I going to overcome? As we said before, I'm going to overcome through Christ. So it's saying if you don't have Christ, you are not going to overcome anything. Things are going to come over you, but you will not be able to overcome them. So it, this is a concept. This is this is the basis. Of this. It, this, this is where we start. As, as Pastor Mark said, the fundam fundamentals of this, we got to start somewhere. Everybody want to try to get, try to skip to the end. Everybody want to skip to Revelation. And don't start through Genesis 3. No, 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 no. We got to get to the point where we understand the base fundamentals. How do you become an overcomer? Because you, because you confess and believe. Once you confess and believe, then you become that new creature. And then when the situations do come over you, then you're able to overcome them. So I'm going to move. I'm going to shift on over to Pastor Mark because I know he's sitting there smiling like, yeah, I'm ready to I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to roll. So I'm going to tag you real quick. Well, well, well you know, you, you, you captured that so well. And, and I'm, 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 I'm thinking about um, the behavior mm -hmm. of, of, of an overcomer. The right. behavior of an overcomer. See, see, we 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 can talk about the, the Antichrist, and we 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 understand his behavior to some part. Right. But 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 overcomers have a behavior. Yeah. And and and, and, and uh, you mentioned we understand that we can do all things through Christ to strengthen us. We we understand that that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. And are called according to his purpose. Yes. But now here, here is where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. When you are being attacked. Not, yeah. not, 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 not that you attack somebody, but you are being attacked. And, mm -hmm. and, and how, how, what is your behavior when you are attacked? An overcomer has a behavior. And, 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 and so verse chapter 12 in Romans chapter 12, I got to go there because that explains behavior. Listen to Romans chapter 12, starting at verse nine. He says, let love be without hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Love is a behavior. Yeah, yeah. That's a behavior of an overcomer. Then he says, abhor what is evil. Meaning that that you when you see evil, it makes you want to throw up. You you know what evil? Oh. Yeah yeah yeah. This is a behavior. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Honor and honor giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence. Fervent in spirit serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfast in prayer. So I just, I just went down a whole list of things, but these are the behaviors. You, 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 you love people. You, 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 you be kind and affectionate to people. You honor people, preferring them above yourself. You're diligent when you try to do things with excellence. And then you're fervent in the spirit. Yeah. 
you got some zeal in you. You're not walking around like you're sucking on prune, I mean, sucking on lemons all the time. Yeah. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Because you know there's some things that 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 ought to make you happy. Let me not excuse me. I can't use that word happy. There are some things that you should have some joy about. What should you have joy about? You should have joy that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and he said he's coming back, and he's got a home for you up in glory. And he said, so then when tribulation comes, you got to learn to be patient. There are many people that going through these storms. I, I've been praying for P Puerto Rico and all of those that were in the path of, of, of that hurricane. I think it was Maria. And then we got those that were in the path of, of, of Hurricane Harvey in Texas. And, and then in Florida, those that were in the path of Irma. And then now we have a hurricane right now in the Gulf, a tropical storm called Nate that's coming up and going to hit possibly New Orleans area, or it might come over here onto the Alabama side. Hey, that's some trials and tribulations to go through. Mm -hmm. But the question is, can you continue steadfast in prayer? Mm -hmm. Patient in tribulation and steadfast in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saint and giving to hospitality. I mean, I, I'm just going down the list here. I know that's a lot, but you can read this for yourself when you want to know what the behavior of an overcomer is. And he says, bless those who persecute you. Oh, Lord, Paul. That's a hard one, ain't it? Yes, it is. I'm dealing with that right now. <laughs> How do you bless those who persecute you and bless and do not curse? Oh, Lord. Lord Help us. Mercy. This is the behavior of an overcomer. See, 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 now, now, now I have to say, I know we all fall short and the grace of God is there. It's more than enough. It is sufficient. But, but we have a responsibility as an overcomer. And this one here is bless those who persecute you and yes. do not curse. Yes, see, Lord. Rejoice. In 15, with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind, hallelujah, on high things, but associate with the humble. Mm -hmm. Oh, humility. Oh, how much is that needed in an overcomer? Mm -hmm. Do not be wise in your own opinion. You know, every time I read that verse, I think of my mama's favorite verse in uh, Romans, I mean, uh, 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 Proverbs chapter three, verse five. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Yes. Yeah. He goes on to say, this is the characteristics and the behavior of an overcome. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And so why did I read all of that? And I'm just going to, I'm going to hit it and I'm going to let Paul jump in. It's because we have so many so-called Christians now who are ready and willing to go get guns and go to war with evil because they think 
that they know who evil is better than anybody. They're not trying the spirit. They're not testing the spirit. They're not trying to see if this is a good or a bad person in the spirit, a good or evil person in the spirit. They just going out, you know, just, well, I'm going to protect myself and my family. I'll kill everybody I can. <laughs> you know, and, 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 I'm, I'm, and I'm sorry. I got a problem with that. And that's 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 a worldly view, but then let's come with individual. Are we truly overcomers individually? Are we behaving that way? Are we blessing those who curse us? Ooh, I know I'm stepping on somebody's feet because my feet are hurting. <laughs> my toes are like, ooh, Lord. But but these are the characteristics of an overcomer. All right, Paul, let me take my drink, let you jump on. Amen. Okay. Yes, Lord. It, 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 it's, it is always amazing to me how God works. And I shouldn't be surprised that, that I, when I ask for an answer, God will provide it. As I said, as I was saying, I, I mean, man, I, I, I'm, I'm digging right. I mean, I'm right in this hole and, and just trying to get to the point because it, it's, it's always easy to sacrifice that which is right for that which is easy. I mean, to be able to love without concealment and to get away from the evils that are in that are in your mind. And when you want to be an overcomer, you want to love. You know, I was telling my wife this, one of the hardest things I found about being a pastor is that I is loving in spite of. That is hard to do. And to and not not I'm not even talking about trying to bless those that are cursing you and love on I mean just loving the ones that you know <laughs> that you know yeah, yeah. no without a shadow of a doubt mm -hmm. that they do not deserve it. they don't appreciate it even if they get it they would just throw it by the wayside. But then we sit back and we tell ourselves, Lord, I mean, you you place this upon me. You place this upon me. And then God will then God will respond and say that the everything that you need is in me. And I think one of the things I've learned, one of the things I've learned is in order to process this, in order to be kindly affectionate to one another, to be with brotherly love, to honor and do all these things, is that you have to find the source of the strength to do this. I've already tried to do it myself, try to figure out a way to do it, try to resolve a way, try to find a way to do this without having to love. <laughs> and that is just a waste. It's been a waste of my time. The only thing that I have, the only thing that I can do is just continue to pray through it, pray through it, move through it, and seek God within it. To be an overcomer, as we said before, remember the world's back, you have to be in Christ to overcome. Because as like we said, things are going to come over you. Attacks are going to happen. Even when you don't expect it. From people you don't expect it to come from. Even the world, even the word of God tells us that if that there are those times when we can hide from our enemies because we know they're our enemies. But it usually is not our enemies that attack us. It's usually the ones that we do not expect it. Our brothers that we have to love on, to give them brotherly love are the same people that are hating on us and trying to hurt us. So how do we do this? I mean, because I know a lot of you probably who are listening right now or are going to be listening later are listening to, will be listening to Pastor Mark read the word from 9 to 14 and be like, man, he don't know what I'm going through. Man, that's too hard. What are you talking about? Uh, love them? Do you even realize what, what they did to me? Do you know what they said to me? Do you know how they treated me? Of course he does not. No, that's not the whole case. But see, when you come to that point and they say, well, where's your pathway? Where's our pathway? How do I get to rejoice in hope? How can I be patient in tribulation? Because the first thing I want to do is get up out of it or counteract it. But it's telling you, continuing, then it just tells you, continuing instant in prayer. The, if you can't go nowhere, then get on your knees. 
plain and simple. If you can't go to the left, if you can't go to the right, if you can't go back, you can't move forward, you can't go forward, then you got to go down on your knees. That is where we need, that is where we find our strength. That is where we find our help. Nobody's saying this is easy, people. Being a Christian, loving God, following Christ, following the word is not easy. No matter how much people try to make it seem that way, no matter how many televangelists you watch on TV look like they dance around, they got everything, them, trust and believe, babies, it ain't easy. Yet it's not impossible. Yeah. Because with God, all things are possible. With God, not with me. Because I'm a wretch undone. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. You see this shirt I got on? This shirt is cheap. I'm just about I'm I'm less than this shirt as far as as far as value, I'm less than this shirt. But with God, yeah, priceless. I'm priceless. Yeah. With Christ, I'm priceless. And yes. I, yes, it, it's it's a difficult concept. It is a difficult concept because as he was reading it, I wanted to tell him, look, stop, let's stop right here and let's just shut everything down because right now, it, 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 no, this this ain't gonna work now. I can't bless them that persecute man. Look, I man, look, let me turn off this turn off this video camera and go home, go to bed somewhere because I'm ready to persecute. <laughs> I'm ready to persecute back, baby. I'm ready to curse them back. But I know. But see, as it says, greater is he that is in me. Yes. Greater is he that is in is is God, is he that is in me greater than my problems? And ask yourself that question. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever situation you're going through, I don't need to know about it. Pastor Mark don't need to know about it because we got our own mess we're dealing with right now. But ask yourself, is he that is greater than you, greater than your situation? Because as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, yes, he is. He that is in me is greater than my situation, my circumstance, those people that are talking about me, lying on me, cheating on me, trying to bring me down, trying to beat me down, trying to destroy, trying to steal my joy, trying to do all these things. I can conquer those things through Christ. And then Romans chapter 12, verse 9 through 14 gets a bit easier, <laughs> a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. But anyway, but anyway we, I'm going to shift down real quick and then I'm going to give it back to back. I just wanted to touch bases just to really just to confirm when it says on 19, avenge not yourselves, because that's a hard thing, because we all want to have vengeance. We all want to get back. We all want to hurt somebody. Everybody that's sitting up there dealing with the pain of those 58 plus people that have died for no possible reason, other than the enemy wanted to have a little bit of fun. We all want to avenge that. Those people, they want to avenge that. And they want to go out and kill somebody else. As, as, the, past, as the pastor Mark said, I want to kill everybody. But it don't change the situation. It won't change this situation. Only God can change this. And it has to change within us. Because we're going to sit back here and just continue on this bloodshed. We're going to continue on this pain and this suffering. When will it ever end? When will it ever end? Avenge not yourself, but rather give place to wrath for it is written, as it says, vengeance is mine. So we have to leave, you have to leave this in God's hands. Whatever that situation is, whatever hurricane that's going on, personal hurricane that's going on in your life. As the pastor mentioned, these new hurricanes coming. Everyone in this, everyone that's listening right now has a personal hurricane that you're dealing with. God is saying, don't, don't avenge. If you're gonna be mad, be mad, but don't sin. Get back on, get on your knees. Get on your knees. All right, shifting it back over to you, Pastor. All right, amen, amen. Um, I, I want to close out this this lesson with mm -hmm. this thought today. Uh, us looking at that verse in First John four four, and saying to ourselves, yes. We are comers. Why? Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. 
Yes, Lord. So I would like for those, you, you, you know, you're on, you're on your own, you, you, your phone is on mute. I want you to say, I am an overcomer. And just keep thinking about that to yourself and saying it out loud. I am an overcomer. Not because I'm great, not because I'm this, that, and the other, but because he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Jesus, he took on the sting of death and died on the cross for our sins. But he didn't stay dead. He got up out of that grave with all power and heaven and earth in his hands. And he told his disciples, he said, be of good courage. For in this world, you will have trials and tribulations. But I, he said, have already overcome this world. And because Jesus is an overcomer, we are now overcomers in him. Bless you all for, for being with us tonight. And before we leave a recording, um, we always like to pray the prayer of salvation with you. So just bow your heads and pray this prayer. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and that you raised him from the dead. Lord, Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I now give my heart to you. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. I am now a child of God. I am now an overcomer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Man, for those on Facebook, uh, we're going to come off the conference call right now, and then we're going to go. I mean, we're going to come off Facebook right now, and we're going to go into the conference call and continue our discussion and have prayer time. Pastor Paul, you're going to now have to call in on the on the conference call. Amen. All right. Goodbye, Facebook. Goodbye, everybody.